If astronauts are going to do anything useful on Mars, they're going to have to get around a little bit. They're going to be on the planet for at a minimum a year and a half. And that would be a long time to only stay within visual range of a particular site. In order to do anything really interesting, they're going to have to be able to navigate on Mars. How is it that they're actually going to do that? Well, let's talk about things from the most basic up to the more sophisticated methods that are out there. The very most basic thing, you have the sun. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Same thing on Mars. Well, what if the sun's not up? You have the moon. The moon rises in the east and sets in the west on Earth. There are two moons on Mars, and they behave actually quite differently. Phobos orbits so close to Mars that it actually will appear to rise in the west and set in the east. This is because it rotates around, it revolves around Mars quicker than Mars rotates around its axis. Deimos is far enough up where it will also rise in the east and set in the west, like the sun does. Deimos is just a little tiny pinprick, though. It's a little brighter than Venus is on Earth, but it's still not going to be that significant of an object. Okay, so what's next? Well, we have the stars. Now, the stars on Mars are exactly the same as the stars on Earth. However, their location is kind of different because the axis of Mars is different. See, the north axis on Earth points almost directly at the star Polaris, within a half degree. Polaris is a very bright star. It's about the 50th brightest star, magnitude 2, and thus it is of quite a bit of interest. Now, we don't have a good candidate for the northern star of Mars. The best candidate is the star Deneb, in my opinion. Deneb is about 8 degrees away from true north, so it's still a fair ways away but it's reasonably close, and it is quite bright. It's actually brighter than Polaris, so it's a pretty good candidate. Okay, so what about the southern star? Well, there is a candidate that's closer, but it's still, it's a dimmer star. It's still relatively bright, but fairly dim. That star is Capovelum. It's about three degrees away, which isn't particularly great, but it will at least give you a southern direction. It's probably going to be more accurate than looking at the sunrise and sunset. Okay, so we know east, west, north, south, at least to a rough extent, as well as the Mariners. Well, what's next? On Earth, the next thing you use is a compass. Compasses don't work on Mars. Mars does not have a global magnetic field that is required in order to have compasses work well. Therefore, you can't really use a compass on Mars. Okay, so what did the Apollo rovers use? The Apollo rovers used a dead reckoning system. Basically, they had a gyroscope that told them what their orientation was relative to where they took off. So they would always be able to know what direction they were pointed based off of their starting direction. They could set a starting direction arbitrary and figure out exactly what direction was what. They were restricted to a fairly small area, only a couple of miles, because they had to be able to walk back to the spaceship in the event of an emergency where the rover stopped working. Still, <clears> this <throat> navigation was sufficient for them to do a fair bit of exploration, far more than they could off just on foot. No doubt any rover on Mars will have some kind of a dead reckoning system. Okay, so what next? Well, we have beacons. On Earth, the most easily thought of type of beacon is those used in aircraft. With an aircraft beacon, you will have a signal you can see from a long ways away, and aircraft will have instrumentation that can actually point them right in the right direction based off of these beacons. Now, no doubt any important base will have some kind of a beacon that can be used to determine exactly where you are and how to get towards that beacon. These beacons will only work within a limited range, however, and thus, we, when we're actually doing real exploration on the planet, you'll have to have some kind of a better system. Still, they'll work in most applications and are probably sufficient for just about any kind of real navigation on Mars. Okay, so what's next? Well, 
we have a need to have some kind of autonomous drones. We know that there are going to be rovers that are going to be carrying cargo back and forth. Most likely, the satellite lander will land in an area that is quite barren. We don't want there to be a lot of rocks or anything really interesting near the landing site. However, we're going to need some ice and some other materials in order to keep our astronauts alive and to make rocket fuel for them to get back to Earth. No doubt we're going to have and need to carry a lot of this back and forth. So we're want, going to want to have some kind of an autonomous rover to do that. Well, how are they probably going to do that? They're probably going to set up little beacon stations. They're going to set up a beacon road where the rover can go from one beacon to the next to the next and be able to stay safe. That way the astronauts can mark a safe trail and they can allow the rover beacons to just continue on this path forevermore as long as their solar power continues. Okay, what next? Well, the ultimate form of navigation on Earth is the use of some kind of a satellite system, such as GPS or GLONASS or Galileo are the three most popular types. There are others. GPS is the common name for pretty much all of them, though. So anyone who has a smartphone probably has a mapping program that can pull up and figure out exactly where they are at any given time, especially if they're outside. It'll use primarily GPS signals, although you can use Wi-Fi, which is kind of like a beacon signal, in order to improve things a little bit more. And you can also use the cell phone towers that are also kind of a beacon system. And given this GPS satellite, you can work quite wonders. However, in order to have it work, you have to have at least four active satellites that are communicating with you. Otherwise, you don't have enough information to determine your location. On Mars, that would probably require about 30 satellites sent ahead to have it work, and that seems like an awful lot of satellites to begin with. However, we do have satellites on Mars already. We have four or five, depending on exactly the time period. And, well, can these be used? Well, they can. Now, there's going to be some kind of communication satellites, no doubt, to assist the communication when the astronauts are not facing towards Earth. And these will pass over the base at some regular intervals. And they can be used for some kind of navigation. What you can do is if you have the ability to send a command from your rover to the satellite and have a satellite return a beacon, which you can do when you have full communication with the satellites. You can't really do that with GPS. You don't want to have everyone's device talking to the satellite. Then you can actually get a better idea of where you are with fewer satellites. And that is probably what will happen for the early astronauts as far as using satellite navigation. Whenever they have a communication pass, they'll be able to get a ping from the satellite to determine where they are. Now, in doubt, no doubt, they'll probably be able to communicate back to NASA and NASA could take a picture if they had to to determine exactly where they were. They don't really want to do that, but they could if they wanted to, if there was a true emergency. But in general, you want to be able to navigate without having to rely on Earth, and this is probably how the astronauts on Mars will do it. I suspect they're going to use satellite navigation as a secondary system tied to an inertial guidance system, a dead reckoning system for their primary system, and that will be periodically updated with the satellite signals. They're going to use beacons and other things as they get particularly close. They're going to use transponder trails. And they're probably going to learn at least the basics of navigation with stars and the moons of Mars and the Sun. And with all of that, hopefully our astronauts won't get lost. It'd be a real shame to make it exactly to a planet that is tens of millions of miles away and then get lost while you're there. And there's no one for the first astronauts that they can stop by and ask for directions. Thank you much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have about navigating on Mars or anything else space exploration related. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.